Welcome to KOEM Presents, a podcast produced by KOEM News Now and the four states' most watched news team. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named a 2018 CareCheck's number one hospital in market and top 10% hospital in state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Welcome back. This is my second welcome, so everyone knows. We yep. got into it and we're like, wait, we, we weren't recording. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing? Lance Benning here with you again and Doug Hetty as always. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Freeman Health System, Derail Commodity, and Grand Lake Casino. How you doing? Pretty good, man. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Wednesday, what is today? April 6th? 6th? 5th? Gosh. Something. Just booking. Booking. booking along. We're into spring, we are. right? Um, I know you do your blog and stuff, but like how, I mean, we're already not really halfway into spring, but how yeah. spring and summer and... Yeah, you know, meteorological wise, we consider it, it makes a lot more sense. Um, you know, spring starts March 1st, mm -hmm. summer starts June 1st. Yeah. You know, so we go three month segments. So we're, we're pushing halfway for meteorological wise. Getting close. Yeah. I'm ready for summer. It's this flip flopping back and forth is just killing me. I know. <laughs> it's all over the place. I know. Well, today we're going to talk about um, some technological changes. I'm okay. a big tech guy. Um, I like to build computers, and I'm by no means the best, but I think it's interesting mm -hmm. how, like, you know, just all the technologies have evolved. Do you like to code? I cannot code. I, I mean, code at all. I know, like, the basis. I know through, you know, our station, we've done some cool right. stuff. I, I got long, girly eyelashes, they stick together. <laughs> Yeah. Do you do mascara? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I know that, you know, TV personalities, they do makeup. So Yeah, I just do like foundation. Foundation. Yeah. Do you have a brand? Do you have, because I like the quality, I'm sure matters yeah. like to your sensitive, you know, skin. Not really. It's whatever I grab. Just whatever. Yeah. Um, but no, no mascara. No but I mascara. do have long girly eyelashes and they do jab me in the eyeball all the time. <laughs> so. I hear that with women who have mascara and their, their glasses, you know, hit mm -hmm. their glasses and stuff. Not something I have well, to worry about. All the girls nowadays, the big thing is getting the fake eyelashes. I have seen that. My sister so. had that, and I was like, that is, it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, talking about technology, like the eyelashes are great technology <laughs> for the future. Um, how has things changed? I mean, and one question I had was we were talking about, and this is a few episodes ago, talking about the green screen. Mm -hmm. And like, when did they, you guys start even using green screens? Because that in itself is a technology. Yeah, you know, it, it really took off uh, from the original Star Wars. Are you, are you serious? Yeah, because all that is green screen. Yeah. So yeah. like late 70s is when it like wow. took off. And then TV stations really jumped on board kind of early 80s, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, I don't remember yeah. never not having <laughs> green screen, but nowadays, you know, so much is digital, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of going away from green screen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, but yeah, that technology, gosh, 40 years ago, I, been I, going on. I just think that, uh, you know, a movie has brought it into more yeah. like practical sense that you guys can use. Mm -hmm. And then from like a scientific standpoint, obviously, I'm assuming the speed at which you guys can ga gather data oh, yeah. or like, you know, how is that from when you first started and you're like, man, I didn't realize we would get to this. Well, this yeah. Point. So that's been kind of crazy because, uh, you know, when I started college, so 1997, mm -hmm. weather models weren't even on the internet yet. So we were still getting fax charts. So, you know, the, the real wide paper. Yeah. Out, so the models weren't colored and you had to go through each page, each page and it took for ever and you know we, i think it was about my junior year they popped up on the internet and i was like oh my god this is <laughs> way better and but those have gotten much better because um i mean from the 90s into the 2000s like trying to predict snow mm -hmm. um the models will kind of show where it thinks precip would be but then you had to look through the atmosphere and grab the temperature all the way up and then you had to figure out, is it going to be sleet or freezing rain or snow? Nowadays, the technology, it's so much easier. You look at a weather model and it tells you if it's snow, 
freezing range. Yeah. Sleep. So, so I mean, it's way easier. But at the same time, um, weather enthusiasts, mm -hmm. they know it's on the internet. So in, it, it's a lot easier to read. You may not fully understand it, but then, so that's when we run into the whole problem of people just posting maps all over social media. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a clickbait. You know, it's like if somebody can get on there and be like, man, if I can get 10,000 likes off this and, you know, scare the crap out of people, you know, they're going to do it. Yeah, sensationalize. Yeah. So in, in a previous episode, too, we talked about how frequent the data came in, depending on, like, mm -hmm. the level. Yeah. So did that work on a fax? So, like, all right, these are your times that you're going to be receiving data? Uh, 20 years ago, you didn't. I think... You could get some that came in every six hours, mm -hmm. but that was it. Most wow. of them were 12 hours. Um, and then nowadays, I mean, we have models that, you know, it, it's every hour. Yeah. So, I mean, we're constantly, especially when we're in active weather, you know, I'm constantly looking, okay, new hours out, new hours out, what's changed? <laughs> you know, so the, um, that, that's really ticked up. Mm -hmm. So. And then from like a broadcast standpoint, you know, you guys are obviously getting your data and from a scientific standpoint, and then how does your radar, does, is that similar? Would that be like kind of similar, like your guys' radar has gotten better as time, or is yeah. it just the computer can process it? Yeah, they, the radar's gotten tons better, because I mean, when I was a kid, we didn't even have, you know, the, the big thing that came out when I was a kid was NEXRAD radar. Okay. You know, we, so prior to, I think, I think it came out in 94, you know, we just had, a single sweep, just took yeah. one slice, and that was it. And then next rad radar came around where we started getting composite radar where we could take each site and put it together. Yeah. So then you could get like a national radar. And then, you know, so that really ticked up. And then, um, oh, about eight years ago or so, we got dual pole radar. Uh, so that's a new radar. So instead of slicing it horizontally, you get horizontal and vertical slices. Oh. So you can really take a look at what's going on in a storm. And then nowadays, you know, we have so many different tools. Like we have, um, we, we just call it CC. Um, you know, it picks up. If there's a tornado on the ground, you can actually see if there's debris. So the radar can pick up. All, I mean, the radars are so good. Wow. I mean, we can pick up smoke from fires, uh, a flock of birds. And would that, like, that smoke from a fire, would that affect some, I mean, besides just, you know, visibility and air quality, is um, that something that would affect? No, you know, a lot, a lot of times you can't tell the difference between smoke and clouds. Oh, So, you yeah. know, you can kind of track it back to its origin. But, yeah, our, our data and technology and radars are so good nowadays. I mean. How does that differ from, we have the, the old Doppler mm -hmm. like thing out there. I mean, it's really old. It seems really old. This is all covered over. I don't know how old it actually is, but um, how is that different? Well, so that that popped up here. I think we got that in the mid '90s. Oh, you know, and they everything was uh, like we. I know KOM branded it Doppler 7000. Mm -hmm. You know, everything back then <laughs> 7000, 10,000, Doppler 20,000. <laughs> you know, um, but that that was great back then because. Um, you know, we had our own radar. Mm -hmm. um, and then as technology got better, you know, so we use like, which, well, we can use anybody's radar pretty it's much. It's pretty much nation. open. Yeah, but we're still in a radar hole here. So I would, I would love if we had that radar. <laughs> um, but, you know, technology is moving so fast. So let's say, you know, to, for our station to go buy a new radar, it's about a million bucks. Ooh. And then and in five years, the technology is going to be, you know, you need upgrade. It's already obsolete. We need another yeah. million dollars. So that's why stations can't really do it that much anymore. But we, we are in a radar hole. I mean, so because, you know, we're looking at most of us, I use Springfield's radar, uh, Fort Smith or Tulsa, mm -hmm. Kansas City, Topeka. But southeast Kansas, we have a little problem because we have the Flint Hills. So yeah. the Wichita radar can't shoot through the hills so you have to shoot above it so you don't get an accurate picture of the storm wow. and does is it pretty standard for excluding like where the flint hills are is it pretty standard like the distance like most radars hit x amount of miles or you know yeah i mean you you kind of want to be within about a 
at least 100 miles of a radar. Mm -hmm. and, but we do have a section of the four state area that is about 150 to 180 mm -hmm. miles away from a radar. So that's a radar hole. Okay. So the problem with that is it's harder to detect tornadoes and stuff like In that. In that so, little pocket. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody wants to sponsor a million dollar radar. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, you know, comment below yeah. or something. But uh, last question, we'll take a quick little break. Uh, is there anything you do that's like old school? You know, technology still changing, um, but you're like, no, this is the way I've done it. Or this is just tried and true. The way I forecast. Like the style. Yeah, I'm a, I forecast. Uh, I've never met anybody else that forecasts like I do. I, like for temperatures, I, I take the temperatures at 5,000 feet, mm -hmm. and then I put it through a mathematical equation, which I don't have to do daily because I actually made a chart. Yeah. So, um, and that's how I get my surface temps. Huh. But I've never met anybody else who does it that way, but one of my old professors in college, he was an old Air Force meteorologist, and that's how he did it. Mm -hmm. And he taught me how to do it, and uh, I, I guess nobody else cared to learn, but that's how I do it and it works. Yeah, you just so, like the way yeah. and you know, stick into it. All right, we'll be right back right after this. At Grand Lake Casino, you get more points, more free play, and better rewards. Play at the casino where friends play. Grand Lake Casino, Highway 10 north of Grove, Oklahoma. Check them out online at grandlakecasino.com. Make your home more comfortable with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great in-store selection, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture with stores in Brazelton and Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Welcome back again. We were talking about technology yeah. and the future, but we're going to shift gears. And one question that you get, well, I don't know if you get it a lot, maybe you do, is your, the percent. You're talking about yeah. surface temperatures and percent. We're getting a lot of rain you know, coming in and stuff with spring season. We're going to put it to, put it to bed here on the podcast, <laughs> behind the weather, official. You made a TikTok about it. Is, what is your TikTok? Is it at Doug, Doug Hetty or is it Meteorologist? I think it's at Doug Hetty. At Doug Hetty. If yeah. you look at TikTok, you know, go, go check them out. They're hilarious. Yeah, I had um, one. So, yeah, last fall was the percentage thing. And yeah. I had a, a chief meteorologist um, in Nashville. Her name's Bree. And she sent me a message, and she's like, you broke the internet again. <laughs> and it's because I, I made a post, and it, it went viral yeah and all these other meteorologists are like yeah he's he's kind of right but that's not how i do it because we actually do it differently because then how you explained it yeah so oh gosh we well we oh, need to yeah. start okay we need to so, go back all right it started the question was if 30 or let's say for example 30 percent uh -huh. was 30 percent chance out of 100 or 30 percent of the area right and then what did it, so, um, so somebody asked me, and it was actually, they used 40%. Oh, okay. So somebody asked me, um, what, what does 40% chance for rain mm -hmm. mean? And I wrote an answer, but I didn't really give an explanation to it. And my answer went viral. <laughs> so, <laughs> With no but, founding underneath. But what I wrote was 40% uh, chance for rain means there's a 100% chance that 40% of the area will get rain. Mm -hmm. Well... That is technically correct, but I mean, what it what it's supposed to be is a um, forty percent chance for rain means you are one hundred percent confident that forty percent of the area okay. will get rain. So we cover thirty two counties. Yeah. So when I do a forty percent chance for rain, I'm saying forty percent of our area will get rain. So like if if we get a big wall of rain that comes in where it's like everybody's going to get something, then I go one hundred percent. But here's where it gets different, and some meteorologists do it differently. So when you're forecasting for area, that's the equation you should use. Okay. And there's not, there are some meteorologists who don't use it that way, but they should, because that's <laughs> the correct way to do it. But if you are forecasting for a place, then it's different. So let's say if Chiefs game. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing an Arrowhead Stadium forecast, that 
that is obviously not area. That's one specific yeah. spot. So at that point, if you say, hey, there's a 70% chance for rain during the game, then it goes to the other way where you're saying there's a 7 out of 10 chance that you will get rain at Arrowhead. So does confidence play into that at all, or you're just saying, you know, matter-of-factly that there's a 70% chance out of 100? Well, so it, it comes down to the forecaster. So it would be like, I'm, say, I'm, I'm saying there's a 7 out of 10 chance that mm -hmm. it will rain at Arrowhead. But the problem, so forecasting for an area, you're never forecasting for a specific spot. Yeah. Unless if there's an event or something going on or, you know, an outlaw game or something like that. Yeah. You know, then you're forecasting for a specific spot. But every single day, like when you see the seven day or whatever, mm -hmm. that is an area forecast. So you never, well, let's say never, but you don't often do the place that like you wouldn't just say like Joplin has, you know, X percentage. No, say, I mean, because if you did it, Place by place, I would have to do it for yeah. a lot of places, <laughs> yeah. you know, so like, because, and it would be different because, uh, you know, I'd have to be like, well, Joplin's got an 80% chance, but Pittsburgh's only got a 50% chance, mm -hmm. Nevada's only got a 20% chance. So you just clump the area together and do an area forecast. But yeah, so I did a, uh, a TikTok on that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you know, so I, I kind of like TikTok. I don't have a ton of videos on there because I'm trying to, if you guys have any ideas, I don't, I need some content. I need, yeah. because I like controversial stuff. I like, <laughs> uh -oh. to, I like to, you know, stir the pot. Yeah. So you know. I need stir the pot material. You just need to start like tagging him and stuff and he'll stitch it or wait. Yeah. I think it's stitch where you do the, yeah. the side by side and then and you duet. just, yeah, do it and like yeah. react to it. Um, that, I mean, that's a place for TikTok is, yeah. is hot takes and stuff. You know, the problem with TikTok, that, I mean, I don't use it on a regular basis for like weather because you never know when it, it was made. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get on there and be like, hey, severe weather this afternoon and somebody on TikTok may see it six weeks later. Oh, yeah. And I so. mean, and then live, I know TikTok lives, but you know, you have your own YouTube and yeah, stuff like I'm that. Not doing TikTok live. I'm, <laughs> TikTok just, I'm not doing it. Just sitting there on your phone, just waiting for stuff yeah, to happen. I, I usually just use TikTok strictly just to uh, stir the pot and make funny stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much, that's what I see. I like yeah. it. With the, I guess I have one last question with the percentage thing. Does it change if the severity of it. So like say, you know, you have your radar and like this area is the red or it's like, you know, way heavier rain. Does your confidence level with the percentage change or is it still like, all right, it's only 40% of the area still regardless of the severity? Yeah, severity doesn't matter. I mean, we have a lot of severe weather events where, mm -hmm. um, you know, I may go a 20% chance for rain because literally only 20% of the area is gonna get rain. But in that 20%, maybe a EF5 tornado. Yeah but I'm still only gonna go a 20% chance for rain. Does so. scattered showers get a percentage when you just say yeah, scattered? Yeah, so like in the summer, we deal with that in the summer all the time. Yeah. The afternoon pop-up storm. So uh, I'll use isolated. Mm -hmm. That means like one, two, maybe three random showers or storms pop up. So I'm only gonna go like 10%. Yeah. And then scattered is maybe 10 showers or 10 storms pop up. So I'm gonna go a little higher percent. I'm gonna probably go 40%. And then once you get to widespread, then you're going 80, 90, 100%. Gotcha. Even more reason why I should watch Doug, because, you know, he might say 50%, but is that... I, ne I never use 50. Really? Yeah. So even though I just gave you my whole theory on that, <laughs> so you would think, oh, well, 50% is half the coverage. Yeah. I know how people think. I know people are thinking a 5 out of 10 shot. And I know people are thinking... So he has no idea what's going to happen because he's going 50% chance. Really? He's flipping the coin. So I, even though I may think only half the area, I'll commit to 40 or 60. That, I had never yeah. heard that before. That makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like um, elevators for, you yeah. know, for the superstitious. There's no 13th floor. Or... You know, you'll never see me. I'll never put 50%. On, on now, now I'm going to be paying attention. Be like, is he going yeah. 40 or is it's he going 40 60? Or 60? And we'll never truly know. Mm -hmm. um, that's really cool. Well... I think we'll uh, call it with that. Okay. Hopefully we're going to not have the, all the details yet. In the future, going to bring in another guest. You know who it's going to be yet? I think you know who it is. Do I? Possibly.
Okay. <laughs> Wait, so like on the weather portion? Yeah, with some weather oh. stuff. We're okay. gonna, I think we're going to have another guest be joining us. We have a few episodes left. Okay, cool. Um, get, get another guest in here and talk about some things. You have to tune in, you know, follow. I know on a lot of Spotify and Apple Podcasts, you can follow for alerts and things like that. Um, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again for listening, guys. We appreciate it. If you have questions, we've gotten a few questions. We could definitely use more, you know, comment on Doug's Facebook or check out our website, koamnewsnow.com slash podcast. You can leave questions there. Um, pretty much any way you can get a hold of us. Be like, hey, I have a question for behind the weather. Um, lastly, always thanks to our sponsors, Freeman Health System, Derailed Commodity, and Grand Lake Casino. And we will catch you next time. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named a 2018 CareCheck's number one hospital in market and top 10% hospital in state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Thank you for listening to KOAM Presents. For the latest content in local news, weather, and sports, please go to koamnewsnow.com.